G'day, I'm Mitch and welcome to Lunchroom Hobbies where I've been talking to a camera that wasn't recording for the last 15 minutes. <laughs> Uh, welcome to another attempt at uh, a one take painting, which is uh, off to a roaring start, as you can imagine, where I'm tackling an old Marauder Chieftain that I've had the better part of 12 or 15 years. Um, it's at this point, I'll throw up a spinning version of it so you can see kind of some of the good and bad of this paint job from a, a, a much more inexperienced, impatient, kind of desperate to play, less keen to paint Mitch but they still loved a model and wanted to kind of lavish attention on it. Uh, so we're back with another one take painting where I'm attempting to bring this up to my current standard. So rather than stripping it all off, like it's really common to see with other YouTubers, uh, I'm just bringing this up to what, to my standard, but staying true to what I did here originally. So I'm not trying to cover anything over. How I, I cover this, I have no idea. I've been filming for the last 15 minutes, kind of covering over some of the base coats on this uh, when I heard a camera go click and turn itself off, uh, which means it wasn't filming. <laughs> so there's no audio. Maybe I'll throw in some little bits and bobs, but basically what I've been doing is touching up some of the skin tone, some of the orange around the, the beard, and the obviously the pants where there was some bare metal on the underside. You can see some of that in the, the, the spinning shot as well. So what I'm going to get back into is, is finishing off some of those base coats and I'm going to add some definition to it. Um, so apologies for not having it all here for you. Apparently I, I don't know how to press the record button as firmly as I thought I did. So getting back into it, I was just about to move on to the gold here. So normally I paint bronze for my corn models. You'll see that through kind of bloodthirster videos and previous things. So coming back to gold is interesting. So I'm going to pull out Jahina's gold here, which isn't in the trade because I haven't been using it, and touch up some of these spots here as an opening. I'm sure you tuned in to watch a man shake a paint pot for five minutes though. That's better. Pull a, little bit in, pull a little bit of the Jahina's gold down on the brush, add a little bit of water just to give it a little bit more movement. And then kind of drag the brush through and twist, which gives me a point back. And I'll just come through and tidy up some of these problem areas. It's not going to be quite the same gold. I mean, it's, these are painted when things like shining gold and Burnish gold were around this marauder, so close enough is going to be good enough, I think. I'll just touch up some of the spots where there's a bit of overlap. Same on the shield. on the belt as well. And then finally, I think this is the last of the base coats, although there's some stuff on the back I'm not sure about. So while I think about that, Evil Sun Scarlet. 
So I'm not starting with base paints and I'm not starting with darker shades. I, I plan on pulling everything back. What I'm trying to do is just touch up some of the damage from sitting around in a garage for years and being ignored, being painted by a, a less patient me, all those little things. Luckily, this red is a very nice match for the old reds, so. Beautiful. Get back to some of the gold that's on my palette. spots on the back here that are, have been missed. I'm going to use a little bit of corn red which is one of the Games Workshop base paints. This is very similar to an old Games Workshop paint called Red Gore, which was my go-to paint for everything. It had these purple touches to it that I loved. I'm just gonna pick back out these hanging tab bits. Rebase cut some parts that were missed. You can see here there's parts where it's still gone. That is the wrong red. And then on the inside here, these are the same pieces. So get them as well. Neatness is good, but not ideal, well, not necessary at the moment. Just touch up this. And again, on the edges here where it's kind of tied off to his belly plate. For the yellows of you that are interested, this was a one-piece model. As in the, the cast, there was no extras. No, no. Something almost unheard of for some of the for the new model, Games Workshop models. This was one piece in a blister pack that you stuck onto a base. And that was it. Silver. Just tidy up some of this bright metal on the face. And that leaves us at the point of adding some shading in, I think. Why not? One last bit of cloth wrap. So it looks like previously I had done these in a white. I think I'll use Pallid Witch first just because its coverage is slightly nicer than a straight white. So lower that down slightly. same way that I put the other one. Looks like I put the other one in, which was this streaky finish to it. And I'll touch up some lawns with it back here as well. 
There we go. Okay. <sighs> While I get back a second to dry, um, look, I hope you're still hanging around and watching. If you are, why not head on down to the description in this brief pause and uh, follow me on Instagram or check me out on Facebook. I post a lot of kind of work in progress stuff and, and things that I'm not filming, but that I like painting. Um, you know, there's things like my slaughter priest conversions and skull altar pieces. I mean, there was a video for that as well. And things that have sat on my display shelf. So I hope you'll check that out. All right. Now that I'm done stalling, uh, let's go. So the really simple option is just to use every wash paint that I own. So, Nolan Oil, Sarah from Sepia, there's a flesh shade in here somewhere, Agrax Earth Shade, Oracle Flesh Shade. So, quite like the flesh, but I do want to kind of tone it down a little bit, and it's the deepest part, so I'm going to start with that. Again, I'm using the same brush, which is just a, a small fine tip brush, and what I'm going to do is just kind of lay it in I'm almost going to paint it in because if I go too much I lose some of that old detail but I just want to give it some depth back so as you can see here kind of dragging it in under the ribs and under the arm just to kind of paint back some of that depth Effectively, you're painting in shadows. It's very similar to watercolor painting. Watercolors, you start light and then you add depth by building it up. So, if you're a watercolor painter, you're golden for doing this work. But if you're like me and absolutely useless at any kind of painting other than on the model, then you're in for an interesting time. hands you can be a little bit more carefree and use it to get definition back on fingers and wrists which is not Moving on to null and oil, I think, next. This I'll use on all the metal. It's quite a dark shade. I'm going to try and not knock this over for a change. So I'm going to let it fill up the eyes, or the eye holes in the helmet, because I'm not actually interested in leaving them open. I'm just going to give it a really heavy and over the top coat because I want it to tone down the um, brightness of that silver. Bring it up to the axe blade as well and under this kind of grey that's on the handle. I'm not trying to be too neat with this, it can kind of blend in with other areas as they get washed as well. black into the pants as well. You'd think a brown would work, but you actually find that the brown will be very similar in tone to what you've painted already. So, same with the shoes. The boots, sorry. Get them in. And we'll just touch up the chain there. Back of the shield. And the greaves and kind of are they greaves on their legs and thigh plates? I don't know.
Right. Moving on from the black, I've got an Agrax Earth Shade. So this is for the bone and the reds. So letting it just got added in. And again, I'm not worrying too much because I'm letting it blend a bit. You can pick up different mix with the blacks. And you get different tones out of it, different levels of shading. I'm also going to use Agrax on the wrappings. So it will end up tinting them slightly, make them look a bit dirtier. Because that pristine white just doesn't scream Chaos Marauder. <laughs> it's an interesting colour though, so. Do the gold wrapping on this wrist and the banding on the shield. I'm not forgetting this shoulder piece as well. So if it looks like I'm being heavy handed, I kind of am, but I tend to kind of draw shades from different parts on the model as I use them. So if it looks like too much in one spot, I just kind of take it and use it somewhere else. So quite heavy onto the horns. Give them some tone. And then last but not least is this head. Last but not least, a bit of seraphim sepia, which is kind of orange toned. I'm going to use this purely for the beard and the hair. So that's where I'm going with these. So. already kind of a vast improvement from where he was and what I'll do is take this opportunity to let it dry and we'll come back to it in kind of half hour or so once everything's set and kind of add in some final highlights. See you then. Okay we are back and this is looking both better and a lot darker. As you can see here. So the next step is just to pick out some of the highlights. I'm quite happy with the, the muscles. I might do a little bit on the fingers, but I'm gonna start with the bone and see where I get to from there. Um, <clears throat> as you can see though, just adding the washes in has just changed it completely, giving it a little bit of depth that it was lacking, uh, mainly because it was painted from time and washes weren't really a thing. So I'm gonna go straight back to Shabti Bone. just brightened up the camera because I thought it was actually a bit dark for this. So fine tip and I'm just going to come through and I've watered this down quite a bit. So as you can see. It's quite wet on the brush because I only want it to be, I just want it to be sort of transparent and then just come through and start picking out some of these raised edges. It's almost a dusky look. The other thing is that this is a, a quick kind of quick and dirty highlight rather than a six hours of, of thinking about a highlight. I'm just trying to pick out some of that detail on these higher edges. <clears throat> if you're working with a dry palette like I am, I find that you have to kind of constantly readjust which is interesting 
It means that some tiles come higher up that are stronger than others. Those things dry up, but I actually don't mind it. I've just kind of gotten used to it at this point. I think I find it weird to just do it any different way. So under the horns, a little bit more paint into it this time. So drawing it out so that there's a sharp tip. We'll go from the base, going to go to the classic kind of bright tipped horn. So we'll just kind of follow the curve of the horn. Leaving some of that dark to wash. From the base of the horn, but again near the top, let the whole highlight kind of blend together. Gives a subtle blend when it's just watered down, and it's working. It's effectively the same tone of paint that it's covering, so we'll just kind of slowly offer the contrast. to the skull and just touch up around the eyes a little bit more to make them pop and we'll have the nose on both sides. Alright, next up back to the red. Gonna jump straight past a, stri a, a red highlight to Fire Dragon Bright. We're going to need a little bit for this. <clears throat> Again, watering down quite a bit because otherwise it will look ridiculous. So you can almost see the rest of the palette through it. Come through and we'll just pick out these hard edges. Probably the easiest scene on the shield here. There's no raised edges on the shield, but we do have these scuff marks coming through. Definitely hit one edge of them. Sometimes if you find that you can't quite follow the line, you can use the edge of a brush to really get it to kind of stick out. So we go. <clears throat> Going to use Rune Lord Brass as a highlight to the gold, which is quite silver. 
Let's see here. So we've got some tones that are independent. They're not. I don't want to use a pure silver, like uh, what is it, Storm Host or whatever, because this has some of those red tones that apply in the gold in this already. So let's grab that and we'll just kind of pick out the edges just a little bit, just to make it pop a little bit more. So you can focus on kind of raised edges center of some of these flatter bits just to give them something a little bit different going on. Same for the shield. We're going to hit the top edge here. We're going to hit the top of the arrow. Down here. And then that edge of all these Try to maintain a firm grip on your model. I uh, obviously can't. And I'm going to grab a Kislev Flesh. And again, this you really want to tone down a lot. It's quite interesting. It's got some orange like, tinting to it, which actually makes it really interesting to pick out individual hairs. So it's going through it, and not everyone needs it. The odd couple in the beard, kind of on this curve here, kind of tucked in a little bit, give it that little bit of something different, and then we'll do the same on hair at the back. Same Kislev flesh. Come back through on the hands and surround this wrist and then this bicep and just kind of retouch up some of the highlights that have got covered with that wash. <coughs> Trick here, I'm really focusing on raised edges, so I said I wasn't going to do the skin tone, but I think it actually needs it. So I'll just raise the side. I'm not going to over the top with it. And then just hit the knuckles as well. So that's fine here too, just on this edge. I think this is pretty close. <clears throat> Last couple of steps though. Stormhurst Silver, just to do some scratching onto the armor. So this isn't about a highlight. Again, more, I'm thinning down quite a bit. This is about kind of giving it some scratchiness. So in spots, a couple of lines, making it look a bit scuffed and battered. And 
coming up to the helmet here. I will actually use a little bit of a highlight and just pick out some of those leading edges. The arrows and the banding of the top. Get the head to pop a little bit more. Final step of this is to come back to these scuffs that we've put in here and just kind of a little bit of almost a little bit damage. Finally, up under the axe head. I'm trying to leave this red untouched, but I'm going to just draw some streaks through it on both sides. Change it up a little bit and give it some brightness and down the edge as well, just using the side of the brush to catch that edge. Away with the palette we go. I'm just going to break this off. Say goodbye to the old base, which is a bit sad. So what I would do if I was uh, running through it and not cheating a little bit is obviously 32 mil base because I wanted to fit in with my blood reavers and then I take a bit of cork. This is actually off, uh, I think it's a sparkling wine bottle or something like that glue it in place and chunk it up but you know, in the spirit of all good television cooking programs here's one i prepared earlier so this has got again a piece of cork off the same piece of cork glued in place it's been hit with a uh, storm, ver storm vermin storm vermin fur base coat and then a non oil wash this is just covering a pin to keep it nice and clean so what we're going to do is just clean up his feet, get him glued in place, and then I'm probably going to have to restart the clocks. Sorry, all the cameras, just to finish up the last few bits. So take this pin off the place. All these old pewter models had this classic tab on the bottom. It almost feels wrong to take it off, but... Uh, we'll hop under that. With the tab gone, take a file to the base of the feet. Just move them up slightly. Then we've got the pin on one side, so I'm just going to drill a hole through the bottom of the foot. Firm grip, and this is a, a one mil drill bit because it's only a small piece of uh, paper, but one mil through just to hold it in place. Just give this a little bit of stability when it glues in place. One thing with this stuff is that it was a very hard metal, but small drill bits struggled anyway. So you need to apply a bit of pressure, but not too much. And just kind of up into the foot we go. Gonna restart all the cameras and then we'll come back to putting them together. Okay, we're back. I've hit uh, a new record on all the cameras so that uh, I actually get footage of what I'm doing now. I'm just gonna finish off this pin. 
I'm just trying not to come through the back of this guy. There we go. That's done, and I can tear off this piece of masking tape. That could have been done better. There we go. Just grab a big pair of cutters. So, I always find it's good to just check how deep the pin goes. And then take it down. That's probably about right. There we go. That'd be a nice clean addition of say two or four pins to the back of the boot. Okay, super glue. Under both feet, the pins there just for that little bit of extra stability. One, two. And while that kind of fixes in place, I'll do a quick tidy up. Great opportunity for you to go and hit that subscribe button if you've got a chance because I mean, okay, I might hold on to these, they're kind of interesting. Don't want to miss out on the next time I do these. So. Still gluing in place, but relatively firm, so I can do a bit more with it. <clears throat> Final steps then. I'm not gonna dry brush the base just yet, but I will before this is over. So, had a lot of fun with Blood for the Blood God last time. Seems a pity not to do the same here. I'd kind of hark back to what was originally done with this wax blade. Or what I was aiming for, obviously, was to have some kind of blood effect. So here we go again, letting it up as a dry brush basically, and then kind of until it gets quite streaky, and then we go like this. And then just keep loading it up into that spot. When it seems to disappear on you, I just get more. found is this kind of streaky flicky thing as a technique gives you this interesting build up and I just like to trail it down until it's a little bit onto the hand. Just kind of dab it and get it going in nicely. Next step is just to grab some Carrick Stone and dry brush that base. So load up the brush and then kind of unload it onto the palette until it's just streaking. And then just catch all the edges. Let it cover the boots a little bit as you do this on your model because it looks like they've kind of picked up dust from where they are. Any kind of brush with a half decent tip. The chaos black. Sorry, the badden black now, isn't it? Showing my age in the hobby again. Just go around and clean up this base rim. The black.
And that is it. Finished. From mediocre-ish model to this updated and ready to go into my army as a leader for one of my Blood Reaver units. So. There you go. Hopefully I, you'll take some inspiration from this and, and redo some of your models, previous ones that you've been thinking about stripping and going, well, maybe I'll just try and update them a little bit. I mean, this wasn't too bad. This wasn't too hard. It's not 3 million highlights. It's just something to raise it up to something that I'm much more happy with. And I think it looks great. If you enjoyed this, I hope you hit subscribe. I've asked you several times through the video. I mean, it can't hurt to ask one more time. Uh, let me know in the comments, D did you like this approach? Do you think that stripping it would have been better? Have you tried it with your models? Have I inspired you to do it? Um, you know, Show me some of yours. You can tag me on Instagram or, or I'm assuming you can send messages through YouTube. But show me some of what you've got going on. I'd love to see it. Um, so until next time, I'm Mitch. You've been watching Landroom Hobbies and hope you have a good time doing something different. Cheers. <laughs>